Oh, perfect. Hi. What's good? <laughs> What's up? Hey, Jeff. Hi, everyone. How are you, everyone? How are you guys doing? Good. That's my first time actually getting two guests at a time. This is like a, this is like a <laughs> gift from God. This is amazing. Double trouble. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, how are you guys doing? Where are you guys right now? We are in Arizona. Actually, wait. There's a... <laughs> you got a sign. We're in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Where okay. in Arizona? How, how is it down there? How is the weather? It's hot. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but it's like 30 degrees outside. It's Celsius. It's much warmer than New York. No way. It's yeah. crazy out here. It's like yeah. basically summer here already. Summer been started. Yeah, I mean, it's up. still cold. I'm, like, I'm seeing the trees right now moving. That's so sad. When That's I come so back. <laughs> <laughs> That's so okay, I'm just going to That's good. How, what, how, what have you guys been doing? Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, not much. Quarantine, can't really do much. You just been staying at home. That's good. <clears throat> so. Hi, everyone. So, so today, my Hi, guest. Hi, Fatu. Uh, <laughs> is here. I, I just saw her going. Hi, Fatu. <laughs> Hi, Tuvani. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so my guests today are Akima. Oh, uh, Wang. Akima on the left and you have Saba on the right <laughs> they both supermodels amazing friends of mine also <laughs> and, <Stop it. laughs> and um i'm really happy to have you guys today so i want to start so i want to start with so both of you guys are from south sudan yes Saba, i know you have dinka and half nowhere yes Akima, <laughs> you are nowhere full dinka full dinka okay okay yeah Okay, so I want to start. So Akima, you can start. What what is your what is your background? What what were you doing before modeling? Before you got into the industry? Ah, uh, okay. So I'll and come a little bit closer to, to the camera. Come closer to the camera. Let me correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how's this? Yeah, it's good. Now I can okay. talk to you guys. All right. So, um, hi everyone. My name is Akima. I'm full Sassanese. I grew up in Australia. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Australia, and I started modeling like three years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Before that, I was working in a nursing home. I was a lifestyle officer and a carer as well. So. Um, Hairdresser, a little bit of that. <laughs> she did my hair, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see me? You see, you see this? <laughs> yeah, and after that, I just started modeling three years ago. And yeah, it has been um, really, really good. Actually, it has been a good journey for me. So there's not much I can say at this point. I mean, we know. You, you, you have done everything. Amazing. <laughs> so how about you? What were you doing before modeling? Um, before modeling, what was I doing? I was just working a normal job, you know, trying to get into modeling. And, um, yeah, just been chilling, to be honest. <laughs> I was <laughs> just school and work. So how, how did you get discovered? I got discovered through this beauty pageant that I did. It was called Miss South Sudan in Melbourne, Australia. Mm -hmm. And from there, like, people gave me contracts. I'm like, do you want to be a model? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then from there, like, my career kicked off, so... So you were doing you were doing beauty pageant in, in Australia? Yes, a beauty pageant, a small beauty pageant. Oh, that's, so, that's, that's so amazing. How was that? That was that, that must have been a fun journey. Yeah, it was fun. I was nervous. Never really done anything that like that before, so kind of give me some uh, confidence. That's amazing. How about you, Akima? How did you guys scout it? Um, so I moved to a new state. I moved to Adelaide. And I was just like, stuck. it was a new year, you know, you made your new year resolution. I just wanted to go back to school and study. But um, I went to an agency with my friend. She was, I mean, he, his name is Mawood. Shout out to Mawood. Oh, Mawood. <laughs> yeah. um, he's also a model. So we went into the agency to look up his things. So I was like, let me just tag along and go along. And then the agency, uh, Bridget uh, said, 
you know, you just have to sign up. And I was like, mm, I'm not sure. And she's like, no, you have to. And then she told me the benefits of it. And I was like, you know what? Let me give it a, sh a shot. It's beginning of the year. So nothing is going to hurt. It's not going to hurt anyone, me trying it out. Definitely. Yeah. That's amazing. So how how did you guys get into Australia? Because I know you guys were from South Sudan. It's like a little more sensitive, but I wanted you to get to touch on it a little bit, if you guys were comfortable talking about it. So how did you guys come to Australia? Um, so Robert, you basically, yeah, so um, we came from a war-torn country. So South Sudan had civil war between the North and the South, and that divided it and caused a lot of corruptions and basically just everything, every aspect of war. So from there, most countries, uh, most people um, flew to different countries, like my family and I went to Egypt, Kimo's family went to Kenya, other people went to Ethiopia or everywhere else, and then from there, like to settle down for a couple of years till the war calms down. After that, we moved to Australia and basically became citizens from there. Oh, so you moved to Egypt first? Yeah, I was in Cairo, Egypt for about three or four years, and then moved to Australia in 2005. And why was a lot of people going to Egypt? Because last time I had here George, and he told me also he moved to Egypt. And why was why was you guys decided to move to Egypt? I mean, like we're just going to the neighboring neighboring countries. So South Sudan, he's like here, and then yeah, yeah. We, all the country, most of the countries like close would open up camps for yeah. refugee, and that's mm -hmm. pretty much where they were opening up, like Kenya, yeah. Egypt. The surrounding countries, like the bordering countries of Sudan, which are like Egypt, Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, those are the countries that like border. So those are the countries that everyone flee to. Some went to Egypt, some went to Kenya, some went to Ethiopia, some went to Uganda. So yeah, that's it basically. Was like, was about, and you, Akima, you went to um, Ethiopia. No, not Ethiopia. No, I went to um, Kenya, which well, basically is Kakuma, but it's in Kenya, but it's like. Maybe a couple of hours by bus to um, Nairobi, like the city or something like that. So, yeah, we went to Kenya. Okay, and then you guys, each family, you guys didn't know each other. And then you guys, each your family came to Australia. Yeah. I met Akima in Sydney during castings. Yeah, fashion week. <laughs> fashion week, fashion Sydney week, fashion week. Yeah. <laughs> how was, how was, how was, like, how, was, how, was, right, how wait, right, exactly. So how did you guys, how did you guys talk? Like, how, how was it? How, what was the story behind it? <laughs> okay, so what happened was, I saw Akima walk in. Like, she came out of the casting, and then I was coming out of the casting after her. And I was like, oh, I think she's Sudanese. Let me say hi to her. And then I said hi to her. <laughs> I was like, hey, are you Sudanese? She's like, yeah. I'm like, what's your name? She's like, Kima. I'm like, oh, Saba. Yeah. And then we became friends. <laughs> wow, that's such a beautiful story. <laughs> that's like good. That. <laughs> yeah, and then we did, like, a couple of shows. So oh, we, yeah. we saw each other a lot. But, yeah. And we shot together once. In Sydney? No, in London. Yeah, I was in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. London. Yeah, we did Bogi Tele together. And then, like, that's amazing. Show in Sydney. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing. So, um, how did that make you feel, guys, to leave um, your country, like South Sudan, and go to Egypt and go to Australia? How did that make you feel, like, when you were young? What was in your head? What was in your heart? I think when we left, we were very young. So, we haven't had, like, a really bad traumatic um effect on it but i can tell like even now thinking back like how bad things were like you can even when your parents tell you at the end of the day they just want the best for you but it's just as kids you're just playing around with your friends you don't know much about it until mm -hmm. later on you grow up and you think back and you're like wow that was a really bad situation so yeah, yeah. i was i think i was 13 or 14 when i left so yeah yeah. But are you pretty, that's a, you kind of know a little bit what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was very aware, but it wasn't, because I didn't know what was out there or, you know, all I knew was what I had in that little village. So, uh -huh. yeah. So your parents did like amazing like job trying to hide it away from you and not to really tell you what is really mm -hmm. going on for you and not be scared. How about you, Sam? Yeah. How was it for you? I mean, I was really young. When I left Sudan, I was about four or five years old. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, I was like four. And when I moved from Egypt to Australia, then I was like around seven years old, seven and a half. So it was, oh, that's a shoot. <laughs> that's a shoot we shot together. But anyways, um, 
Yeah, no, it was it was tough, like especially on my parents. Like with me personally, I don't remember much of Sudan. I remember a bit of Egypt because I went to school there for a year or two. But um, yeah, my parents had the most effect on it, and that always like remind me where I came from, and you know how much they suffered to bring us to Australia to give us an education, give us opportunity. Mm. So that's basically I just learned from my parents. I'll ask them questions like what happened, all the stuff, why is this happening, and they just explain to me basically why everything happened. Mm. And if you ever miss like a class or you don't want to go to school, they're like, we did not suffer for you to miss school today. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you school, I heard that story. <laughs> Yeah, of course. You're tired, you're going to <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. At least they, they were, they were, they were, they, they try to protect you guys as much as they could, you know, and and, yeah. and try to have a better life for you guys. Yes. So shout out to those mothers and dads. Shout out to mommy and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what how did you guys become this international model? Because both of you guys. Uh, both of you guys are signed with two major agencies. So how did you guys become? Come went to Paris, then New York, then London. How did that came about? Akima, if you want to start, and then next time. Um, I want to say like me traveling overseas. I was just going through a lot in Australia, and I just mm -hmm. it was basically like a way out for me. So I was like, nah, just I think I need to go somewhere and do modeling and try it out overseas, because in Australia there's. It's not, it's very commercial. It's not like high fashion or anything like that. So it was like, I was ready to leave Australia and experience something new. The experience for me personally, like I felt like I'd worked enough and pretty much like done most of the things in Australia. And I just wanted a more challenging and bigger, um, a bigger, what's the word? Platform? No. Uh, market yeah. different market so i came mm -hmm. overseas and then i got signed in the, the four major capital cities through my mother agent and through my other agencies as well so they basically supported me throughout my careers and then you know made it happen within a small space of time which i'm very grateful for and yeah it's just it's great it, it was definitely challenging and it still is but um yeah i'm having like a really good experience it's it's basically i'm happy i'm living my reality so <laughs> That's amazing. I'm I'm super happy. Yeah. So what I always ask this to everybody that comes. What did you guys do with your first check? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't remember. Let me think. Pete, you wanna go first? Okay. Um I I gave it to my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are not trying to lie to us and look like a good kid. <laughs> you sure you're gonna, you're gonna give it to somebody? Or... No, no, this is definitely towards the family. We okay, have a lot of stuff that we support, like in Australia and overseas as well. Mm. So we try to, you know, be good with our money and try to save too. So. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, Saba, how how did you? Um, how did your mom felt when you told her about you wanted to be mo to be a model? It was, it's, I think it's one thing to want a model in Australia while you're there, but it's totally a different thing for a young girl that's like 18, 19, 17, trying to leave the country by herself. How did your mom feel about that? Well, my mom has always been supportive to me and my siblings. Um, she's always supported us in anything that we wanted to do. So my mom would always used to come to my shows in Australia. She used to take me to my shoots. She used to always just be there and support me. You know, the community didn't really support at first. They'd always be like, oh, you know, it's not good. It's not safe. They're going to do this and that. You know, all these negative comments that they had told my mom, but my mom never listened. She'd always just support me and what I wanted to do. So I'm very grateful to have a mother like that because most Sudanese parents are not very supportive and they need to fix it if you aunties are watching. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> seriously, support, support is very important. I don't think I would have got where I am right now without the support that I got from my mother, my family, my siblings, and the people that are close to me. So I definitely think like she did a great job in supporting me. How about you, Akima? What was your mom's reaction? Um, I think my situation was a little different because when I started modeling, I was 22. Yeah, I was 22. So I pretty much had like a lot of freedom to do what I want or where I wanted to go. So when I spoke to my mom about it, she was like, I can give you at least a couple of months to see how it goes for you. So yeah, still like she had a little bit of control. Like, oh, I don't think you should go in there. But you know, since you're a big girl, you can try it out and see how you go. Wait, everyone was very scared when I went overseas. 
Yeah. She was like, uh, no. How long are you going to go for? I was like, move you three months at first. That's what the, that was the goal. But then, you know, everything escalated. And I stayed like seven months overseas without coming home. And that was like really, really harsh for her. But, she, you know, she calls me every day. Till this day, we, we FaceTime every day and we speak. And, you know, it became a little bit easier. But yeah. I don't know. I can't really speak for her. Yeah, thank God for technology, but I think she's still worried every single day, like mothers do. But yeah, it was hard the first time me going overseas for her. I could tell her in her face. Of course. I mean, they care for their daughters and everything. It's very hard for the like, yeah. young kid to go by themselves. And what, what was the situation about you with the visa? Because I know it's like something very hard also. Because last time I've spoken to um, George, and for him it was very hard because all his papers were Arab, uh, Arabic because he came from Egypt. Yeah. So how did it feel for you guys? I feel like that's a big situation that a lot of people don't talk about. And I mean, what was the proceed, the pro, like the process of that? For me personally, um, when I first moved to Australia, my parents gave me, my siblings, and the rest of the family um, a citizenship within the first two years I was in Australia. So I had an Australian um, passport and Australian identity, basically, like citizenship. Yeah. So for me, it was easier to get the visas. If I had been on a um, immigration or like some sort of um, visa like that, then it would have been like harder for me to get my visa overseas. But because I had an Australian passport, it made it easy for me to get my Australian, uh, my UK and my US visa and visas throughout the world to travel. So that process wasn't as difficult. I mean, it is hard, but at the time for me, it wasn't as hard. Yeah. I had support from my agents that you know had done everything for me. Yeah, and how much are you? Being an Australian citizen, you get a lot of benefit as well in Europe countries. So mm -hmm. as in Europe, it's like, it's just a trip, basically. Yeah. And we can work there. We don't need like a visa. So for Europe, it's fine, but only maybe New York, America is a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. The that whole American system, it, system is like, you have to like pretty much apply for a whole visa. You have to pay for it. It's a longer process. A lot of money but too. at the end of the day, when you're Australian citizen, then... You just have, have a lot of benefit to it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So it was Thank you easier. For that. So it was a little bit easier for you guys. Yeah. yeah. And how, how um, did you? We have heard like having issues getting to the U.S. We're like, oh, sorry to hear that. But I think it's people that doesn't really have a passport or citizenship in the country that has like alliances with other countries. I know Australia and the U.S. and like some parts Europe, of Europe have yeah. some sort of alliance that makes it easier for us to get um, visas and you know documentations to travel. Whereas mm -hmm. if I didn't have an Australian passport and I was on my visa that I came with from Egypt that is that is in Eng um, Arabic, then that would be harder to get a visa. Whereas you know becoming a citizen it makes things a lot easier. And my birth certificate and everything, all my documents is in Arabic. But then I translated it and then sent it over. Okay. So just for in case like the people like, because I feel like that's like a very hard thing that people go through all the time when it comes down to visa and and papers. So how did you guys felt about being? Uh, a black model because I feel like that has a different impact on you more than most especially with you girls that like usually you guys are the token in the show maybe Sabu you started a little bit after Akima but Akima I know you started like from the very beginning you started with like um, very major shows and it was like <coughs> sorry <coughs> one or two black models in the show how did you feel with that how did that make you feel yeah when I actually first started like there wasn't like a lot of black girls and I just, I didn't think about it because I'm like, I'm overseas. I don't know where the black models are. But yeah, now that I realized the one, like I would be at least one or two black girls in the show and it would be like big brands or something like that. But I just never, cause I was new in the fashion world and I didn't know a lot about it. So when that was happening, I was like, oh, okay. Maybe there's just not a lot of black models. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I feel like in my experience, um, as a black model, we have to work 10 times harder. And I feel like a lot of people can relate to me in terms of that. Like, and then also it's, it becomes really hard, like in terms of castings, like, you know, only a few models will be, you know, chosen to do the show. Like it's changed now a little bit and there has been um, an increase in diversity, which we're all very grateful and happy to be a part of that movement. But, you know, we still, it's still a struggle that we need to keep, you know, pushing for, you know, to have more and more, even not just even just black models, just, you know, models of color to have an equal ratio yeah. of Caucasian, colored models and everything so that, you know, everyone does feel like it is a fair game. Mm. Definitely. But Saba, so for example, for you, congrats on that again. You walk Victoria Street, which is like a show that 
was not very easy to get. No. I mean, I was there doing the experience and I witnessed everything, how stressful it was for the family and for yourself and the people around you. But how, how did you feel during that process? How, how did you feel during the process? How did you feel after? I mean, just hearing that I was confirmed was just so surreal for me. Like, I didn't think... I didn't... Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It was just, like, honestly, it was just surreal. Like, I was very happy. It was been a dream of mine to go to the circuit since I was, like, about nine years old. So I was really happy to, you know, have been able to, to walk the show. But the whole process was just very scary and nerve-wracking. You know, I mean, you was there with me every single step. But, like, going from castings and, like, you know, trying not to eat that much because <laughs> I had to keep my ass on. I'm not an don't stop myself. <laughs> but that day, I had to keep my body <laughs> So it was just, it was hard. Like the night before I couldn't sleep. My mom, I told my mom to New York to come watch the show and I was just like so nervous. I just couldn't wait. And it was just, I don't know, it was everything. Every emotion. I was scared. I was happy. I was excited. I was nervous. Even the day of the show, like when I was there about to walk the show and then the person setting me off was like, you know, Sava standby. Oh my God, my feet were shaking. I was so scared. And I was like, you know, Sava go. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but as soon as I got on the runway, like everything just went over my head. I started having fun. I was waving with my mom and my friends. And I was like, oh my God. You said it was an audience. It was an audience. It's fun. <laughs> But yes, it was it was a beautiful that. experience. I feel like yeah, a, a lot of us are like just as people of color, we all make us proud because we always see every type of um, ethnicity in in that show. But it was very rare to see like very dark skinned models, you know, that 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 re to represent us the best possible way, you know. Yes, especially that year, I feel like. That was the most diversity of Victoria's Secret fashion shows ever had. Like, I feel like there was like, there was more than like 50 nationalities, something like that. So it was, it was very good. Like, I was very happy to see people that look like me, other people that look like other people. People kept, like, everyone had a role model there, basically. You know what I mean? I feel like That's nearly, definitely. almost, not every, but almost <laughs> every, every ethnicity was there, yeah. which, is, which is very good. I was very happy to see that. I was very happy to be a part of it. So, And I feel like that was the goal, too, to have everyone. Yeah. Like, so it was very nice. And it was very hot. The casting, everyone was sweating. So many girls. Oh, my goodness. They sent all the girls to the casting. They basically Those say, we want to see everyone. Yeah. yeah. And it, that wasn't okay. even everyone. It was just, like, selected people. You have to be requested to come to the show. And then, and then another request, request. And then the request, request. <laughs> and then the callback casting. Oh, my God. It was I know. Out. You know, how stressful it was. <laughs> it, I know it was, but for people that are watching, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I still, I still get actually the badge from the show. Oh yeah, give me. I still, I still have it. It was, it, I think it was amazing, and it makes us feel so proud. Even if I wasn't your friend, I feel like for us as dark skin or people of color, it made everybody feel proud. Yeah. You know, to see somebody that looks like you that's walking the show like that and feel represented, I feel like it was very important. So, um, Akima, how did, how do you feel? How do you deal with anxiety and stress? Yeah, that's something that we really go through during this career. And I know, like, you're like a very calm person, but I know you still go through it sometimes. So how do yeah. you deal with that? Of course, I everybody do. But you just never, ever thought you would be in a place where you're judged on your look, you're judged on everything. So, wait. Are we back? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like being in a world where you're judged on your look, basically everything is about it. Because nobody's gonna get to know you or your personality until you are you have one-on-one -on -one and you guys are having a shoot and they'll get to know you of like who you really are. But it's very stressful, I think, at the end of the day, you just have to realize not everything is for you, some things are for you. And you have clients that like actually really, really care and love you and like care about your work as well. So at the end of the day, you just have to like focus on the people who want us and exactly. yeah and just know your limit as well because you have to fo you have to know which one is your market and where you fit in or where you want to fit in and then you focus there i don't think you should try to be everywhere all at once though but how do you how would you how would you discover that how would you find that out what is your market and where you're supposed to stay in? um well during fashion week basically you're doing a lot of shows or like different type of brand you're working with a specific brand 
and they keep working with you then definitely like that's where you are and that's where you should be and you just discover as you go as well you give yourself time and we don't all stick in one place as well like maybe one year you're in beauty and then the next year you're in high fashion so it's never really one thing but if you focus on one thing succeed in that and then move on to the other part okay so stay focused on step by step each phase basically yeah out of your career yeah do you how and, and how do you feel like how do you deal with that do you think that having a good agent helps or is it you personally that actually sit down and think about your own career how 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 was it for you it's 50-50 as well like you got to have your input and your agent as well and see where you guys work well and discover which market is good for you at that moment definitely yeah how about you saba how how thing. how do you feel how do you deal with anxiety or stress i mean we all do get anxious and stressed out at certain times especially if it's like a big show or a big shoot or a big job that you want to really really want to get and sometimes you get it sometimes you don't i personally feel like you have to stay really optimistic and try to stay positive and if, you know if you have faith you know if you believe in god pray that's what i personally do um and you know just try to stay positive if you try to stay positive you know you manifest that positivity comes back to you so with me personally that's how i deal with you know every aspect of my life not just modeling you know so that's basically how i deal with it okay and how career wise how do you decide when it comes on to jobs when it comes on to um what type of like like akima said if you want to do beauty this season or you want to focus on this show how do you deal with that do you think that is you that's actually concentrated on that or is that um your age how how to do it for you and sh- what's up at there um <laughs> so basically um we have like meetings at the agencies like myself and my agents and all my agencies across the globe like I'd come into the office and I'd be like you know this season I want to accomplish this you know what I mean this season I want this and this season I want to accomplish this or in this amount of time this is what I want So for instance if I want to do more editorials I come and be like you know I feel like I don't have as much editorials can we work on that and they were like yeah sure I said they would send out um emails to different types of uh, like creators so photo- photographers stylists magazines all that kind of stuff so they go and handle that business and try to make it happen you know what I mean of course not everything happens that I want for it to happen but they do try their best you know what I mean mm-hmm. so that that's that's basically just teamwork me and the agencies working together to try to accomplish what I want and what they want for me. Of course they do most of the management like dealing with clients and everything, but I also have a say like for instance if I want something more, they'll go and like push for that as much as they can. Definitely. So it's definitely important for anybody that wants to get into modeling yeah. to try to get a agent that actually cares for you and actually here for you. Yes, so my advice for aspiring models um is to basically go out and see agencies contact them do what you can to to get in front of them and basically just have a bit of a judgment like see who's the most enthusiastic about you because that's the mindset that I had coming into um seeing agencies and everything I went and saw which agency is the most excited about me which agency feels like I feel like would work hard and push me the most you know what I mean because it's really hard being a model sometimes sometimes you get forgetting sometimes you know there's too many models and you know you, they don't have your best interests at heart like not every agency but sometimes that may be the case and maybe it's not even just that maybe they're just too busy focusing on other people so you need to feel like Bless you. <laughs> you need I'm to feel cold. like they have your best interests at heart. They're always going to push for you and you do have some sort of relationship. It doesn't have to be personal, but just that relationship where, you know, they're always going to be working at your best interest. Mm. That's not that's very important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's not okay. Um thank you for uh, uh, giving us more insight on that. So, yeah. how do you guys feel about these no fashion week? How do we feel about fashion week? no fashion week. there's no fashion week this oh week. no fashion week this is coming from what they paid for that <laughs> so look at that photo of you uh, i am i love that picture I by the way i can like i just two seasons off actually so i've been like doing a lot of fashion week i've just been doing like direct booking just taking a little break so i really don't mind <laughs> <laughs> okay what's the question, what's the question? <laughs> So you know they're saying that right now they might not be um fashion week. So how did you how do you feel about that? The fact that there's not going to be no fashion week. Do you feel like there's going to be less job now for you to work cuz if there's no show then there's not going to be a lot of lookbook, then I going to be e-com. So how do you feel about 
that. I mean, it's very saddening, especially with this whole virus that's going on, COVID-19. It's very, it's very depressing and it's, it's sad for a lot of people because, you know, it's not just something that only impacts me, it impacts people. Like someone could have just got signed and they're really excited to do next season and now they can't, they can't do that because the shows have been canceled for the rest of the year. Sorry guys, it's really noisy here. I'm going to wait for that car. <laughs> Bye. Um, Okay, hopefully it's a bit more quieter now. Um, yeah, I feel like it's impacted everyone in a negative way, and not just models, but you know everyone in the fashion industry. You know, designers, photographers, stylists, makeup artists. Everyone that's in the industry, even agencies, it's affected everyone negatively because those are the major, the key major events that happen throughout the year. So it's something that everyone looks forward to. So I'm personally sad about it, and. I wanted the shows to go on, but you know, health is first, so <laughs> can't really do much about it. But hopefully, next year will be better. Yeah, I hope. I I really pray so too. Um, so during this quarantine, what have you guys been doing? What have you been doing to like stay productive, creative, inspired? What have you guys been doing during this time? I don't want to give us one second. The phone's about to die. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties, guys, but it's okay. I've got my laptop. Be back in like two seconds. <laughs> I am Mary, Mary Am. Um, you can check. You can check their Instagram. You can check on the Instagram, and they have the agency, and they're asking about your height and size. I mean, if you guys want to answer that real quick. Oh no. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so we'll hold again. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, our height, so I'm with IMG uh, Worldwide, and my mother mm -hmm. agency is Finesse in Adelaide, Australia. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am 5'11, 180 centimeters, and I am with Maryland's New York and Paris, and my mother agent is Vivian's in Melbourne, Australia. Awesome. So what have you guys been doing during this quarantine to stay creative and inspired and positive? Because there's a lot going on during, on the news, there's a lot going on on people yeah. live, maybe some friends that maybe like not have it or know. Like how do you guys deal with all those stuff right now to stay positive? So we've been going for we've been doing like bike rides. So in Arizona the cases is not that bad, like New York. You can still go out but all the restaurants are closed. Everything is basically close, but if you want to go for a walk, then that's fine. So we've been like doing bike ride. Um, Akim is teaching me yoga. Everyone, you know me with exercise and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's amazing. At least you try you know, something new. Yeah. Yeah, that's yoga. really good. Yeah. yeah. She won't do it, and then after she done it, she's like, oh, "I feel so much better." <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Akim, but maybe you should then do uh, like an Instagram it. live, and then we can maybe follow you with it because I would like to try that actually. I've never actually tried yoga. Oh, I, no, we're just doing it on YouTube, guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing my Pilates. In one year, she will be a Pilates instructor, professional. You will. So, yeah. Ask again in one year. <laughs> go live. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so, uh, what else have we been? We've been playing Uno, left yeah. and right. Um, we watch NCS a lot. <laughs> Netflix. So working out Netflix, eat and hanging out with family. So, yep. yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah. what do you guys want to represent in this world? So, like for example, if they were to say Saba Coach, what what do you want people to remember you as? Um, in terms of what, like, <laughs> that sounds very broad. Every in every aspect, I'm like whatever up. aspect you feel like is more important for you. Um. I feel like I'd like to be remembered as someone that's always very positive, someone that always try to give a helping hand, someone that, you know, just tries to stay positive and help when I can, I guess. Like, I don't know. How would... I think we should answer it about each other because then it's hard to talk about yourself. It's better when someone else is seeing it and then they will be like, okay, this is how this person is. Someone doesn't like to give herself compliment, guys. Okay, so let's, let's do that. <laughs> I want to hear what you, what, so what would you think Akima wants to be represented as a member as Saba if you were to describe Akima? 
I think Akima is so nice. She's very, very calm. I'm not being biased, guys. Like, she's, she's a really nice person. Every time someone will be like, oh, do you know Akima? We're like, oh, Akima. She's so nice. You know what I mean? She helps people whenever you need help with. And, like, she's always very positive And she's a very, like, manifestation person. Like, she puts out the energy that she wants. Thank so. you. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> if things get that way, I feel like. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Akima, how about you? What do you think of? Saba, what do you think Saba wants people to remember her as? I think Saba would want to be remembered as a strong, independent woman who support all women and everyone else, especially women. Everyone, <laughs> especially women. Um, she wants to be remembered as a businesswoman, a woman that actually did something before, you know, she leaves. Wow, Kiva, that's good. <laughs> that's amazing. This is beautiful, guys, okay? You guys think that you guys are just giving each other compliments, but I feel like this is beyond giving each other compliments because we have a lot of women that are maybe watching or they're not watching, but the, the, the message and the connection between two women, especially with you guys, that you guys are in the same industry. You guys walk in the same show sometimes. You guys don't see that competition between you guys, and I feel like it's very important, and I'm really happy I get to... You guys have to sit and talk to me about this because it's it's beautiful to see women supporting each other, especially from the same background, same from the same like uh the same industry to support each other. Because I feel like we need maybe the industry or whatever we're going through will be so much easier if all the people from the same background have this community mindset where we're all helping each other. I feel like it's very important and it's yeah. super super beautiful to hear you guys like you know representing and supporting each other like this way. Yeah, I mean, it's, before we came, it's something we saw as well, and we're like, why aren't we like supporting each other? Why aren't we there yes. for one another? And it's just something we came into the modeling world thinking we're gonna meet all the Sudanese girls and we're all gonna be in La La Land, so <laughs> you know, and that's what we're gonna continue. Like, if we see it, any like, we're I'm like a we're nice, we're nice people. Yeah. If we go casting and we see other girls, we talk to them, yeah, but at the end of the day you connect with your community much, much stronger than anybody else. So you know, we're open to like getting to know everyone. Yeah. yeah. Every time we see good. like, yeah, go on. So how do you, how do you get, what do you guys think is the reason why sometimes that happen? Cause I know that like, I mean, I know you guys and I know sometimes how the industry is. So how do you feel like sometimes certain women have this competition with each other and they're like, oh, it's going to choose only one dark skin model, for example, in the show. So I have to make sure I take it. I feel like personally, people that, you know, act that certain way have come into the industry with that mindset. So for instance, they wanted to pursue modeling. You know, they asked other people that they want to do it and, you know, advice about them. And maybe someone had given them advice or they've heard from other people that, you know, in the industry is so tough. And you know how everyone has those stories, oh, model houses are so bad. Yeah. Um, people, yeah, just misinformation basically. So everyone comes in with that mentality and, you know, they're scared. But sometimes it's like the flip side. Sometimes modeling is all they have to make money. Like I've met like girls from different backgrounds and this is the only thing they can do to support their family. So they come in with a really strong energy that they have to get the job. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter who's standing in the way, they have to get the job. So it just depends on the perspective on how they've come into the industry and how they personally deal with it. I personally feel like this is how it is. This is my opinion. But coming into the industry, clients know what they want. They know who it is that they want to book. So at the end of the day, if it's meant for you, it will be for you. You don't have to really compete or be nasty to somebody else just because you feel like they have a higher opportunity of getting it or you have a better opportunity of getting a job. Like, you just need to be positive and just know that whatever's meant for you, if you're meant to walk a certain show, book a big job or whatever it is, it's going to happen. So if you have that mentality, more positive will come to you. When you project negativity, you know, sometimes it has a downfall. Sometimes it will get you far enough, but then it doesn't really last. So that's just my input of it. Mm -hmm. How about you, Akima? What do you think? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, it's misinformed and people that don't have experience, like, listening to other people. And it's like, you go out there and experience for Hi, yourself. Roy. <laughs> Sorry, it's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just go out there and experience for yourself. It, it's definitely going to be different with the other person experience. So that's something we have to put on. And at the end of the day, if you go to casting, yes, you can do whatever you can. But that doesn't mean you have to be mean to another girl. Yeah. You can be as nice as you can. Talk to the client, whoever that's going to hire you. Just talk to them, get to know them, do whatever you want. Tell them whatever you want. That's up to you. 
So if you're going to get the job, that's the person you should focus on, not the, not the other girl. Yep. That another model has nothing to do with the impact that you have in a job. Bless you, Eleanor. Are you okay? Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah. cold. I, I'm not wearing a lot of clothes today. And I'm, I've been oh. getting this cold. I went outside by the water <laughs> and I stayed there and I was drawing and I haven't had a jacket and it's just got me crazy. So. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't do that. I'll be fine. But I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. Alhamdulillah. Um, <laughs> so, so... Um, before I start taking questions, because I'm seeing some people asking questions. So what yeah. um, what revolution have you guys made during this quarantine? So when you, no, first thing first, when you get out of this, what do you want to do first thing first? I'm going to go out. I'm sorry. I'm going to be stuck <laughs> up. We're going out, Eloise. We're going to listen. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to go see my family. Um, I'm going to catch up with everyone. Um, just enjoy being, having the freedom to be outside again, because I feel like we're trapped. And I don't like it. I'm very claustrophobic. <laughs> Definitely. How about you, Akima? What, what one thing you want to do as soon as you get out? Um, not much, actually. I just, but I, I just want to have that freedom again of going She normally stays and, home. Yeah, I'm a homebody, so. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready to cancel plans. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come out once or twice and then cancel the rest. <laughs> for real, for real. So, Akima, what, what, what revolution have you made? What revolution have you made for, uh, for this quarantine during this time? Because I feel like a lot of people are getting into, you know, getting to know themselves more, thinking a little bit more about what they want to do in their career, what is their path, what is their mission in life. So what revolution have you made during this time? Um, for me, personally, not a lot. And I'm speaking about the environment because I, I have, like, very small footprint in the environment. I'm a vegan. I make sure I eat organic things. So, and, you know, just don't use things that are bad for the environment so in that part i'm just going to continue to do what i was doing before and i think everybody should rethink after you know we get out of this situation how we should consume what we consume and what we put in our body and skin and how we like travel as well so that's just one thing i'm just not worried about that part but me personally i think i'm just gonna I'm, like work out more and accomplish more things that I'm just not like a very I mean I have goals and everything but it's just I don't have control over them right now so I'm just waiting for those opportunity to come to me and for me to do something with it awesome awesome yeah um personally I want to work out more because <laughs> that's something I've always wanted to do and I feel like especially being in quarantine makes me want to do it more so as soon as you know this is over that's what I'm going to focus on the most and that was a part of my new year's resolution and after quarantine it's like my pre new year's resolution so yeah I'm a part-time vegan with a chemo because she, <laughs> she's vegan. wow <laughs> she's vegan that's, that's some big news <laughs> yeah. she can go on for one week without eating one week, being, half, yeah. one week and a half, Akima. One week and a half. Yeah, because I love eating. Not for any bad purposes, but I just can't do it. Mm. You I'll do it part time. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. One work week out is already more. a lot for you, Saba. Huh? <laughs> I yeah, said one is. week is a long time for you. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's hard. <laughs> but it's definitely accomplish accomplishable. Mm -hmm. um, work out more, continue to stay positive. You know, put out positive energy. Try to, you know, talk to me more people. Smiley <laughs> says, stop lying. Huh? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Hello, <one. laughs> Let, No, Fatu, Fatu said, stop lying. <laughs> Fatu! <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, okay, Sam, okay. Keep on going. Sometimes she will speak one of other ones. It's okay. Only Fatu <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely gonna try. I'm not lying. I'm gonna try. However, I succeed is me trying. Okay. Okay, that's how he starts. <laughs> yeah. So what you said you want to start um, eating healthy now, do some sports. What else? Yes. Um, I personally be working on a project that I'm very excited about. Human as well. Yes. So as soon as this is over, I'm hopefully it will be. Kind of ready, so I'll tell you more about it as the time comes closer. So that's something that I've been working on during quarantine. 
and before it, but more because I have more time now, so I've been working on it a lot more. <laughs> Somebody said that Australian accent. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh no, that's somebody else. Hold on. <laughs> Just remember us. <that. laughs> Hi. Yeah, we both Aussie, so it comes out a little bit here and there. Yeah, I don't Especially think I'm saying that it's strong. It's not strong. How do you like? Oh no, I was trying to remove the comments. I mean, not remove them, but like, <laughs> but in my face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, Akima, what would you want to tell your younger self? Ah, oh. <laughs> Akima, you can be honest. <laughs> yeah, you have to be. Don't talk to boys. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, That's important. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Waste of time. I was just tell on to be positive and just keep going and keep pushing yourself because you know um the world is your oyster if anything like at this when i started modeling you know i just like before i started modeling i limit myself because i'm like you know what i'm just gonna go to school graduate get married have a nine to five jobs but you know after traveling experiencing the world meeting so many people i'm like you know what akima take your time you, you know Mm -hmm. what's meant for you is for you so yep. you know i'm just taking it slow i'm just and that's what i would tell my younger self to be like take it easy on yourself you don't need to rush and that's, that's important how about you Zaba? Hmm. i feel like i was great as a kid so I'm <laughs> oh. i was like i was very self-motivated so i would basically tell myself you know continue with your motivation continue to chase your dreams like stay true and humble to yourself like i'll always keep telling myself like that to, like that that is in english <laughs> anyways <laughs> i continue to tell myself that um i continue to tell myself you know to keep being positive keep aiming high like aim really really high because everything hi dumb <laughs> sorry that's my friend um yeah continue to tell myself just do better be a better person continue to just compete with yourself somebody asked do you live together if yes how is it uh we don't live together not really we don't live together we stay together <laughs> yeah lot. when we're in the same um, city city yeah, yeah we stay together but we don't live together yeah so we're exactly in australia are you guys they're not in australia you guys are in arizona, arizona. tucson arizona united states of america mm. i live in new york now so when Saba is ever in new york she comes to me and she's in london and i'm barely in london yeah <laughs> that's, that's great um so for example um how can i how can i say this so so what 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 do you guys so i know you guys have like a huge platform now you guys have so many young australian or south sudanese or egypt like that follow you guys right and what 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 message do you guys want to send them out before this end to those young girls looking at you that are inspired by you guys? I personally would tell them anything is possible. You put your mind to it. If you work hard towards it, stay persistent. You can achieve anything that you want. Like me personally dreaming of Victoria's Secret at nine years old and accomplishing it at 21. Like that was huge for me. Like I couldn't believe, like I could even do that. So being able to think it, and working towards it and it actually happens, you can overcome anything. So I would tell you to just keep, you know, having the faith that whatever it is that you want, you can get. Um, oh yeah, somebody say, where are you guys from in Australia? I'm from Adelaide, but I grew up in Canberra, which is the capital of Australia, guys. Not Sydney, not Melbourne, <laughs> Canberra. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm from Melbourne city in Australia and it's the best city. Akim is always there, so. <laughs> I can't wait to go to Australia next what? year. I keep asking all the time. <laughs> I can't wait to go to Australia. I really want to go to Australia. That's really um, yeah, you gotta come to Melbourne. About, no, I'm definitely gonna come to Melbourne. Even yeah, Sydney, I want to try Melbourne. Sydney. Yeah, Sydney is alright. Sorry, Sydney is. Sydney is. I think Sydney is great. I think Sydney is boring. 
it's going to be very hard for me to come to Australia because this fight of Ali, would you need to come here, not there. Ali, you're definitely there. coming to Melbourne. There's no choice. There's nothing. You can't talk about it. I know. Your, your mom would probably say that. would be like, oh, yeah, you're not going you're anywhere going else. Where's Ali? Where's Ali? Um, Akima, how about you? What would you tell that girl that's like, you know, following, following you, listening to you? What message do you want to send her out before this finishes? Because um, Instagram is shutting it down. Oh, it's gonna end now. <laughs> What's gonna end? <laughs> it's the end in what after one hour. Oh, has it been almost an hour now? Yeah, yeah. it has. <gasps> Damn. Oh, wow, it is. Okay, let me answer the question. Um, no, take your time. Take your time. You have a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, I thought there's like a timer to it. It's just gonna cut out after one hour. I thought that's what you meant. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. We have okay. we have a couple of minutes. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> answer the question, Akima. <laughs> I mean, um, wow. <laughs> no, sorry, guys. I'm just Someone waited for Melbourne. Have five. There's no Adelaide people. If you're from Adelaide, let me know. <laughs> Actually, so a little bit of outside of Adelaide, Adelaide is so clean. And there's a Wait, lot of green. Adelaide, Adelaide one. I saw it through one of my other friends from, from Australia. And he showed you have me a outside. friend in Australia? Ooh. Yeah. That's not me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know I have, you know, I have friends everywhere. I feel betrayed right now. I feel very betrayed. We're going to talk about this. Episode. What do you mean? You guys know who that is already. <laughs> who? Oh. A, a, a dude showed me, showed me I, I think I don't know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Doesn't>. yeah. uh, <laughs> I yeah. think from my 